Before I start, there's audio duct commentary, because a lot of people have my ability to audio duct for the sake of brevity. I have no personal hatred toward Dwayne McAllen. This commentary is on a random video on his current channel, Sailor Moon for Life. This is not intended on starting drama. This is just me trying to entertain. So for the love of humanity, please do not go on this man's channel to harass him. Now let's start this audio duct commentary, if you will. And already I gotta give Dwayne credit. His room is organized unlike a certain disgusting motherfucker. Hi, everyone. Sarah Yornis, Amara here, and today we're going to talk about, you know, interweb bullying and how it happened to Dwayne and how it need be still happens to others. Some criticisms were valid in 2011, others were a waste of time, but let's listen in for a bit. yourself out there on the interweb, you're going to get hate. But then again, one could say the same thing about putting yourself out there in true life. Like saying hello to a woman just for them to walk away from you. I'm glad I quit that shit before I got old. That goes about being said that that might be a shift off for anyone as far as being on the interwebs go. But how do you do? How do you handle it when it happens in true life? Because it does happen in true life. You know, at the homestead, the workstead, the learnstead, anywhere where bullying can be done, Sally, it can be done. Dwayne is right about this. No matter where you go, you will be subject to a lot of hoopla. Don't know their names, don't know their back sagas, don't know what's going on in their life at the time, but starting from 2000 and 2000, 2000, 2008. Is it really hard to say 2008? 2000 and uh, three between FYL, or third between FYL, how do you say that? You can't say 2013 either? And Are you sure you graduated high school, bro? The hate started with first just writing, you know, mean things on the films, and on the fairways where it starts. Yeah, well that was the beginning of it. And keep in mind, Dwayne never said or did anything to these folks, so keep that there. There was a reason why Dwayne got criticized a lot. Some of it was justified like his views on work or video editing in general. But I feel that Dwayne was harassed to a certain extent. It's not right. You know, they would make up things because they didn't really know anything about him beyond what he put out there, which wasn't as much to work with. To be fair, you just turn on the camera and say whatever. Not sure if you write your bullet points or just say everything on the fly. They've been doing or saying something that gave him something to work with. The only thing it gave him to work with was, yeah, Sailor Moon dolls on the interweb. Controversial take. I never saw Sailor Moon, and I don't understand why Sailor Moon was popular with American audiences. I haven't watched anime since 2002, back when I was a teenager. Sonic, you had SpongeBob, you had Mickey Mouse, you had sundry as others. So it wasn't like that he came along and did something else was doing before. And the haters would say that he was lazy. You know, because he didn't have, he didn't work full time or half time like they did. If you folks have watched Junior Fan's commentary, he said regardless if it's a part time job or full time job, you still have to be responsible. Hell, freelance workers get out there and earn any way possible to better their lives. And they started coming up with this belief that that Dwayne was a bad slay on the interwebs, and that they had to they had to stand up to what they felt was a bad slay on the interwebs. What is a bad slay? A villain? I don't get it. Sail of Moon Dolls? That was the bad slay on the interweb? It was not the fact that you were playing with dolls. It was the fact that you were voicing the dolls with no love and no energy. It was just pedantic to get the audience engaged. And any time that Dwayne stood up to these bullies, which you do have the right to do, the bullies like to flip everything and say that he... They like to, you know, gaslight them, or ghostlight them as I'll call it. You had it right the first time, it was gaslighting. Some of the criticisms directed toward you were examples of gaslighting, so I'll give Dwayne credit for making a good point here. Made him out to be the bullied and the beater, if that is in English, whereas I guess it is. Um, but that wasn't true, but that's what they like to do. And then when that didn't work, and when all the, you know, the mean... The hate, uh, the hate did evil, wicked things they would write. I don't agree with comments that were legit vitriolic toward Dwayne back in the day. I remember Dwayne getting death threats for playing with dolls or being lazy. There's criticism and there's going too far. They offshooted to mean film answers, 
which was something you could do on YouTube for a long time. I mean, you could still do it. You just can't, you just can't, you know, hook it up with someone else's upload. And then when that didn't work, came the fake flagging. I think what Dwayne is talking about was the time that Sailor Moon Road 1 was flagged down. I don't know if it was a community guideline strike for bullying or what. Someone point that out to me. Has been on YouTube or UA since 2008 YL, 2005 YL, but it doesn't do what you think it does. All it does was block someone from following you, block someone from white writing on your films or on your fairway. Basically, Dwayne is saying that the vitriolic comments that he did legit receive warranted him to block users. You gotta walk a fine line when it comes to vitriolic comments. Films are up your films. So no, the the setting was um the setting that we got back in the day was clutter. It didn't do nothing. And then came the hacking, and that happened in 2010. Well. 2010? Is that when you lost your original Sailor Moon Red account, forcing you to open your Sailor Moon Red 1 account? They felt that he didn't have the right to be on the interwebs. With all due respect, people found it socially unacceptable for people to turn on a camera, play with dolls, and voice dolls in a somber tone. Because we have lost some of our fair ways to fake flagging in the past, they thought that that would run them off. But no, Dwayne came back with each, with every time the fake flagging would happen, Dwayne would come back. And then Dwayne learned that there was only one way, there were many ways to stop bullying, but he had to figure what would work for him. And that's when he chose not to talk to them. Basically, Dwayne is saying that some of these morons were trolling him and he decided not to feed the trolls anymore. Sure, there were legit morons that bullied Dwayne, but then harsh critics stepped in as well. Writing down, take it off their films. You know, hushed him, locked him, and forbid them from coming to his fairway again. Now I know for some folks that's hard for them to do, and everyone has their own oversight when it comes to dealing with bullying. Some folks might think that, oh, so you're guilting yourself. No, I'm not guilting anyone or shaming anyone who's bullied, because I was bullied in the past on the interweb. I want to say this to viewers watching. Regardless of someone's mental health, bullying is wrong. If I find out that you guys are attacking Dwayne in 2024 because of this commentary, I will hold your asses accountable. Don't fuck with Dwayne. Period. Forbid them from coming to my fairway ever again. You know, I chose to forget them. Now, if someone else, is, someone else chooses to do, that's their own business. You know. And yes, and one little other thing I need to leave you with before I end this film. You know, interweb bullies like to behave as if they're grown up. So if you do block them or hush them or forbid them to come to your fairway, they'll say, oh, well, grown ups don't hush and lock and forbid others from coming on their fairway. Translation, Dwayne is saying that if people bully him, he will block people from his comments. Again, walk a fine line when it comes to vitriol. Hell, they don't do bullying at all. This is a very logical point from Dwayne. If you are going to be an adult, set a positive example to your audience. I salute Dwayne for finding a way to deal with hate. Kids, betweeners, grown-ups. Well, guess what? Grown-ups are as guilty of bullying folks as, as walkers, kids, and betweeners. And this is exactly why I have a hard time subscribing to channels on YouTube, because grown-ups are not setting examples for other generations. But Dwayne is actually being the adult in this situation. In the words of Charlie Sheen, Dwayne is winning! And, yes, grown-ups do hush, block, and forbid. They do not bully, or guilt or shame the one being bullied, or beaten. Alright? So, anyway, that's just talking about how Dwayne dealt with interweb bullying, or whatever you want to call it, from 2008YL to 2003 third between FYL. I, Sailor, Ju I, Sailor Yornis, Sailor Skyrold Amara, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. Farewell. So long. That's the end of the commentary. It's great to look back to someone who is a lot more mature and a lot more down to earth than Chris Chan. I'll even go so far as to say that Dwayne is actually a lot more mature than 80% of YouTube's user base in 2024. 
How the hell did he do better than even the so-called respected names in internet history? You know, folks, looking back on the life of Dwayne McAllen, and this could be a controversial point, I think Dwayne was immensely overhated, meaning the amount of vitriol he got was too far. Sure, some of you folks may justify your criticisms like that Dwayne is lazy and needs to get a job and pay taxes. I'm not going to argue that point. But in terms of subjectivity on the production of content, I think a lot of you will agree that people's commentaries and rants on him went way too far. I think Dwayne was abused as well on the internet, but I never talked to the man privately. When someone like Dwayne is far superior to Chris Chan, Spax3, Bausch, or even the Amazing Atheist, society is fucked up as a whole. Anyway, I hope this video does not offend Dwayne if he does watch this. Hopefully he gets a laugh out of it. Stay tuned for episode 3 of Life in the 1990s.